Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminolly, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, uh, trashy non-fiction about prostitution, I'm doing a review of The Happy Hooker by Xavier Hollander. So this is part of my ongoing Countdown to Garb August series where I'm reviewing a series of trashy books in the run-up to the start of the greatest reading event in history, um, Garb August, which takes place in August, and where we will be reading the trashiest books we can find. Um, this is definitely a candidate for <laughs> a very trashy book. Um, it was quite something. Um, and it's worth noting as well that it was hugely successful. So this came out in 1972, and this edition, let's see, when's this actual edition from? This edition is from 1973, and you can see already on the cover that they are boasting that it has sold six million copies. So it was hugely, hugely successful. Um, Javier Hollander, who's the, the author, albeit I think she co-wrote it with a couple of actual writers, um, was a, um, a madam in New York uh, and a prostitute herself as well who came to public attention um, because I think she testified in a high profile um, kind of trial or investigation about police corruption in New York. Um, so I think she kind of got into the public eye that way um, and subsequently cashed in on that, um, that notoriety by writing this book, um, which as I say was hugely successful. And then she did a bunch of other things as well. So there were a, there was a there was a movie based on this with the English actress Lynn Redgrave, who's you know quite a well respected actress, um, playing Xavier Hollander. Um, she was also uh, and there were so so she wrote a, a bunch of other books. Um, there were other um, movies as well. So there's certainly one called The Happy Hooker Goes to Washington. Um, she recorded like a spoken word album where she, you know, I think she probably did a tour, like a kind of speaking tour. There was like a social a spoken word slash comedy album. Um, there were, um, I think there was like a happy hooker board, like board game for adults, that kind of thing. So there was just a ton of stuff. She was hugely, hugely famous for, a, you know, a short period of time. And the early 70s, I think, was a time, perhaps particularly in America, where there was loads of attention around sex. Um, so, you know, the, the, the porn industry was kind of really kicking off in the state. So it was, I think, a couple of a year or two later that the, the, the very famous hardcore porn film Deep Throat came out. Um, so that, you know, that kind of um, period after, I suppose, the kind of um, the late 60s and the kind of hippie free love period, um, we then moved into a period where corporate America started cashing in on um, society's obsession with sex. Um, and this is definitely part of that story. So I think it's a, um, an important book kind of culturally um, because, of, because of that. So it's an interesting book uh, kind of culturally, but is it a good book? No, not really. Um, it's 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 a lot longer than it needs to be. So it's like three hundred pages, and there is interesting stuff in here. Um, and Xavier Hollander definitely has an interesting um, outlook on life, and you do, you do learn a lot about her character. Um, and what I found particularly interesting about it is she was only in her late twenties when she wrote it, so she had already lived quite quite a life by then, um, and is incredibly. Um, opinionated and um you know has a has a very strong opinion of herself as well um and and interesting opinions of the people around her um so for a relatively young person um you know she's definitely outspoken and and interesting and i can see why she caught the public attention um you know not just because of her profession but because of her personality as well um so yeah she definitely you know she definitely comes across as an interesting person in the book um but yeah, it just goes on a bit, to be honest with you. Um, so you learn a lot about her philo philosophy of life, um, you know, her thoughts about prostitution and things like that, clearly, and sex. Um, she's definitely a libertarian um, to, to the extent that she seemed to have, you know, scant regard for the feelings of people around her. So later on in the book, there's loads of descriptions of the guy was, who was her boyfriend at the time, who she just treats appallingly, and he seems to be completely fine with that. So she constantly cheats on him, um, at, at times openly and at other times clandestinely. Um, 
she tries to get him involved in things um, he, you know, he isn't particularly interested in doing, like swinging and things like that. Um, and also, just the way she describes him is pretty, is pretty awful. Doesn't it? Doesn't feel it fe feels like she was in a relationship with him because it was convenient rather than for any other reason. Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, she's she's definitely got interesting views on things, um, and she does get into the kind of minutiae of running a brothel. Um, which is quite interesting, you know. It's always quite interesting, isn't it? Hearing people talk about their their jobs and their professions when it's a profession you don't really know anything about. Um, so you know the, the way she talks about, you know, how she manages the uh, or manages the the girls who are part of her stable. Um, she, you know, she talks about um, the role of pimps in prostitution and things like that. Um, so it it definitely has something interesting to say. Um, and it is an interesting take on a part of life that I'm sure most of the six million people who, who read it at the time, did, you know, knew nothing about. Um, but it does go on a lot. And, the, and a lot of it is just descriptions of, of sex, which, um, you know, sex is sex is fantastic. Um, but reading other people talking about sex, uh, particularly some of the sex acts in here, which are frank, frankly quite odd, um, is, you know, is, is I, I always think incredibly unerotic i think it's the least sexy thing um in the world but there's you know there's some interesting stuff in here about um different you know different perversions and kinks and things like that and the way that um she as a, as a prostitute and a madam would cater for people with with those kinks um so that was quite eye-opening um but yeah o overall it's um it's not a book i would recommend reading um uh, what i would say is and i did say this in one of my wrap-ups there seem to be multiple versions of this book so this is the uk edition from the 70s um it uh, but it is um it's cut so there's at least one scene um which i've i've read about in reviews on goodreads which is not in this book so there was uh, evidently there was a, like a 30th uh, 30th anniversary edition that was published in the early 2000s which a cut out some of the more unseemly sections of the book um including the one fairly or, fairly early on in the book um which is also missing from this one um and also tidies up or, or modernizes some of the language that we say so some of the slurs and things like that that she uses in the book are are removed or replaced with uh, you know more pc um equivalents um but yeah i was surprised to see that or to realize that this particular scene and i won't say what it is because there might be kids watching um that this, that particular scene was removed um if you look on uh, if you look at reviews on goodreads you can probably figure out what scene it is because lots of people talk about it um so yeah, I was surprised it was removed, but clearly that you know UK publishers were uh, a bit less uh, daring than US publishers. So it was a bit disappointing that this was a censored version, but I don't think it was censored apart from that. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it's 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 fine. It's it's interesting. It's salacious. It's completely unerotic. It's a bit repetitive, um, but it is interesting and it's a fairly easy read although I did have to stop reading it and read other things <laughs> a few times so my normal um, kind of modus operandi for reading is I start a book and keep reading it until I finished it and don't read anything else but with this a because there's not really a story as such running through it um, you know it's more a series of anecdotes um, I, I was fine with stopping reading it and also it just gets to the point where you can't, where you can't take any more and you need to cleanse your mind with something something else. Um, so yeah, an, an important book, definitely a trashy book, um, definitely interesting, but I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, but if you have read it, um, and do let me know and do let me know what you thought of it. Okay, time for me to pluck a random book from the shelf. So I haven't got anything else prostitute themed uh, to pull out to talk about um, after talking about The Happy Hooker. But I have got Jaws 2, um, which is a very well-known novel, or very well thought of novelisation of the movie. So the movie Jaws 2 obviously is not you know, considered to be that great and is um, you know, certainly considered to be a big drop in quality um, after Jaws, a, a drop which continued um, in the series thereafter. The book is very well thought of. So the book is, as novelisations often are, based on the screenplay rather than the finished film. And, I, and I've certainly read some reviews of it that's, that say they think it's a better novel than Jaws. Um, Jaws obviously being the book that the original film was based on rather than a novelisation of the film. Um, so that's quite high praise. I have not read it yet. Um, I do love it. I think the cover is just phenomenal. Um, 
And yeah, I will probably, well, possibly read this in Garb August. Um, perhaps, perhaps. I've had it for a while and I do need to get to it. But yeah, I, I haven't quite got to it yet. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, do let me know if you've read either The Happy Hooker or Jaws 2 and what you thought of them. Um, and as always, hope you're safe and well. Hope you're reading good stuff and I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.